Welcome to GoVM Lab, India's first job-ready VMware learning platform where professionals meet experts to revolutionize their VMware careers. So now the next module, what we have it is a migration technologies, right? And that's where we're gonna go and talk about today a different kind of migration technology is what VMware is having it. It's your vSphere vMotion, storage vMotion, shared nothing vMotion, and then they have something like a cross vCenter vMotion or long distance vMotion. So we'll go and talk about all of these vMotion technologies. Ultimately, the, the architecture is same. So let's go and get started with our very first migration type. That is your vSphere vMotion. So, so let's try to understand how this how does this vMotion works. So See, vMotion happens in the phases. Okay, when you right click on the VM and you just say that change compute resource only and it, it will just ask you, okay, tell me the destination host. And if the compatibility check is passed, then your vMotion VM will be migrated, right? From the UI perspective, it might happen very fast. But in the back end, if you really understand the architecture, a lot of things, a lot of phases happens of the vMotion in the back end. So very first thing, what will happen if I just try to draw down, right? So I'll just try to explain you in reading structure, right? So let me just draw down the diagram here. So now if I just try to explain you the vMotion here, so let's assume that this is my ESXi host one. Okay. And this is my ESXi two. So let's mark this as a ESXi one. And let's mark this one as a ESXi2. Then what do you have it is? You will be having a port group created here. Let's say I give a name as PG. PG1. And that is where my VM will be connected, right? So I'll just create a VM here. VM1. Connected here. Now on the other ESXi host, depending if you have a distributed switch, as we have discussed, if you have a distributed switch, then distributed switch by default will have a PG1 created here also. But if you have a standard switch, then you have to manually go and create a PG1 here because that is the basic difference we have discussed during standard switch and distributed switch, right? So if it's a standard switch, then you have to go and create the same port group on the destination ESXi host before uh, initiating this migration, right? And then what you will be having it is, you will be having common storage. So I'll just go and have a common data store here. So here I will have a common data store. So this is my VMFS data store, as you could see that, right? So this is our VMFS data store. This is my VMFS data store where my virtual machine files are residing. So my VM files are somewhere residing it here. So if I just erase this thing, right? So my virtual machine files are somewhere residing it here. So let's say this, assume that this is my virtual machine one. So my virtual machine VMDK files, everything is residing it here. And both of the ESXi hosts have access to my virtual machine files. So one thing I'm very much clear that I don't need to worry about my virtual machine files because both of the ESXi hosts have access to my virtual machine files, which are residing in my VMFS data store. Now, and I've also make sure that the CPU features are same. So there is no issue with the CPU compatibility also. Then how the vMotion will work. So now here you have to create a VMK NIC, right? So you will, we discussed about VMK NIC. So I'll create a VMK one here and I'll create a VMK one here. And then there would be a network connectivity between VMK1. Both of the VMK1, obviously, there would be network connectivity, right? This network we call vMotion network. This network we call vMotion network. And both of the ESXi host will have a VM kernel link, which we have discussed. And then this VM kernel link, you will be enabling vMotion services, right? You will be enabling vMotion services on both of these VMK NIC so that the vMotion traffic will go over this network and this should be minimum one gig network which we have discussed now when you go and right click on this vm and say that migrate a vm so what will happen when you say migrate a vm what will happen first you will have something called cold pages of the vm 
okay cold pages and hot pages Let's say this VM is configured with 8 GB memory. Let's say this VM. Okay, so I'll just try to write down the configuration of the VM also, just for our sake of discussion. So let's say this VM is having a memory configured as 8 GB vCPU. It just have, let's say, one vCPU and vNIC is also have a one vNIC. Okay, this is the very basic configuration of the VM. 8 GB VM with the one vCPU and one vNIC configuration, right? Now, when we try to migrate a VM, what is the bigger chunk here? If you try to understand, see, I need to change the memory state. I need to migrate the underlying host of my VM, right? So what VMware does at a part of this vMotion architecture, first, it actually focuses on the memory because this is the biggest chunk. The memory is the bigger chunk because memory, you know that, right? When you're continuously accessing your virtual machine, you're continuously writing to your virtual machine. Your virtual machine is continuously accessible. It means every now and then you're writing to its memory pages. So memory is a bigger chunk, right? And it first takes the hit on the memory pages. And it says that what are the cold pages? What are the hot pages? So for example, uh, if your virtual machine, if you're trying to write, say, if you really look at the application perspective, operating system perspective, if I'm giving some memory to it, right? And let's say this is my RAM. And if I'm giving some memory, right? So what happens is in the RAM also, some pages are continuously written. Some pages are frequently written. And there are some pages which are not that frequently written, right? Some pages are not that frequently written. And we call these pages as the cold pages. Okay, so there's something called hot pages and cold pages, where depending on some pages will be, some memory addresses will be continuously being accessed by the application. Some memory address space are not being continuously accessed. So what happens is vMotion first trace the memory. So there's something called trace function in the kernel. There's something called trace function. What the trace function does, it traces the entire memory. Memory of a virtual machine, which means 8 GB of memory pages, it will trace it. And after tracing it, it will figure it out. Some memory pages are cold pages and some memory pages are hot pages. For example, it, trace, it traces the entire memory. It figure it out that 1 GB pages are cold pages, which are not frequently being uh, called by this application. But remaining 7 GB pages are hot pages because they are continuously being addressed. Right? So what will happen first, the vMotion module, the vMotion module, the logic of the vMotion, it will first take up this one GB pages, which are cold pages, because these are the one which are, you know, not frequently being updated. The trace function have already reported. What it will do, it will take those pages because where the pages reside, at least the kernel knows it. ESXi knows, ESXi is the one who is managing those pages, right? It will take those pages and send it over this network. It will be received by the destination host and destination host, what happens on the destination host side, what happens? A shadow VM gets created, a dummy VM. You could say that a new dummy VM gets created, a VM, which is a dummy VM, but this dummy VM will have a dummy memory, which we call shadow memory. Dummy VM gets created and we call it as a shadow VM also. We call it as a shadow VM also. So what VM kernel does, it creates a new process. It see virtual machine we discussed, right? It's just a process. So what happens? This ESXi2 creates a new process and that process we call it as a shadow VM. Shadow VM means you cannot see that VM. You as an end user will never ever see that VM, but at the kernel space, this shadow VM will be created, which will have a same configuration, same 8 GB memory, one vCPU, one NIC, but everything will be empty, right? So it will create a one 8 GB of 8 GB pages. It will create it here. It will create 8 GB of pages here. But these pages will be empty and whatever data is coming, whatever the cold data is coming, it will start feeding it here. Okay. This is the first stage. So what is happening? The kernel is actually creating a one shadow VM. And this shadow VM will have a dummy, uh, dummy, dummy VM, shadow VM, whatever you want to call it off. And then it will have some memory. What is the size of the memory? Exact the memory of the actual VM. But this memory will not have anything because see, this VM is not active. So how it will write anything in the memory? But then who is writing in the memory? This traffic. So whatever tra cold pages traffic is coming, the ESXi2 is taking this traffic and writing to this memory. So I have written my cold pages of the VM. Right? The the next thing, what will happen? Hot pages. Now, this is something what is continuously changing, right? So now it has to take care of this, changing the hot pages. 
I mean, transferring the hot pages from this ESXi one to ESXi two. And that is where they have a concept of iterative pre-copy. So that is where they have a concept of, we call iterative, iterative pre-copy. Iterative pre-copy mechanism. What is this iterative pre-copy mechanism does is that once these pages are written, the cold pages are written, the trace function will again trace the memory. Okay, the trace function will again trace the memory and it has says that there are 7 GB of memory which you need to transfer. So what kernel will do? Again, the 7 GB of pages, right? I'll just use a different color just for 7 GB of pages, right? So let's say these are 7 GB of pages. The 7 GB of pages are again being transferred to this VM Kinect over this vMotion network. This ESXi2 will receive. It will write these 7 GB pages here. Let's assume the 7 GB pages have written here. And uh, transferring the 7 GB pages, let's assume it's a 1 gig network, right? So let's assume transferring 7 GB pages took 10 minutes. Okay. So transferring the 7 GB pages from this endpoint source to destination took 10 minutes because of the network bandwidth. So he has written all the 7 pages, 7 GB pages here. Again, again, once these copies are done, Again, the vMotion module call the trace function. The trace function will again trace the memory because within this 10 minutes, this application is continuously writing because it's a live migration. VM is continuously writing. So during this 10 minutes, this application have written again some new pages. It has written, I'll just use different colors. So they have again written some new pages here. Assume it. Some memory pages have changed again. So vMotion module come to this trace function, trace, com trace function come and say that boss in 10 minutes, 4 GB pages have been written. New 4 GB pages have been written. Then what will happen? Again, the 4 GB pages will be transferred. Again, these pages will come here, come to ESXi2, ESXi2 will update it here, and it will update the data here that, okay, these 4 GB pages have been updated here. Okay. So now this transferring this 4 GB over one gig network will definitely take a less time than 10 minutes. Let's assume it take five minutes. Then what will happen? Again, the trace, again, the vMotion module, once this, once this pack, this memory pages are written here, it will come to the, uh, it will acknowledgement will be sent that, okay, these pages have been copied. Then again, ESXi of the source ESXi host call the trace function. It will ask that during this five minute, how many pages have been changed? Again, it will go and trace it. And then now this time, let's assume, this time, let's assume some of the pages have changed, right? So I'll just, some of the pages have changed. Let's say this, this, these, these pages have changed. So again, the trace function will come to ESXi host that these many pages have changed. Let's assume this time, these are only, let's say 512 MB of pages have changed and within five minutes. So again, what will happen? This 512, I mean, this 512 MB of pages will again go to this guy. It will come to this guy. This guy will write it here. Those 512 MB of pages. Again, copying 512 MB of pages will take, let's say one minute, for example. So what is happening? This operation will continue to happen. Keep doing it. VMware will, VM kernel will be keep doing this process in the backend. That is the reason we call iterative iteration. It's happening in the multiple iterations, right? Because the idea here is that the biggest challenge in the migration is your memory, right? Because memory will always, always be a bigger chunk. And when we say it's a live migration, which means we cannot lose the memory state of the virtual machine. We have to make sure that it's a live migration. There is no impact on the virtual machine. So what VMware does, it actually looking for something called convergence point. It actually look for convergence point. Convergence point means he will actually keep doing this, uh, this kind of memory stuff, memory copy in multiple iterations. At one point of time, he will conclude that, okay, there are only one MB of pages, which can be transferred within one microsecond or one millisecond, for example, right? So this will become a convergence point. So he will try to minimize and try to come at the point where now there are only 1 MB, 100 MB of pages, which can be transferred over this network within a less than one millisecond or less than one microsecond. That time, what will happen? It means your kernel have identified the convergence point. This is the time I can migrate this way. This is the time when I figure it out, right? It, see, this iteration can happen 10 also, 20 also, 100 also. No one can guarantee because there is again a limit also, right? Depend. That's the reason they have a requirement of network bandwidth, right? Because sometimes might happen that 
your vm is continuously writing and the convergence point is not coming so kernel is not waiting for infinite time then he will come and say that boss either you add the more either you add more network bandwidth to this uh, network because i am not able to meet the convergence point right so that is where somewhere you might have seen that the v motion is getting time out because it's not able to meet the convergence uh, point maybe your your resource maybe your uh, planning of the virtual machine or network bandwidth is not good enough actually or maybe the load balancing is not happening in the right way where it's not able to use the network bandwidth right so point here is that one it will actually vmware will be keep doing this iterative pre copy till the time when it get this something called convergence point what is this convergence point convergence point you can consider it some point where system has figured it out that this is the time for me where there's only one or 100 MB of pages which I can immediately transfer to the other guys, uh, uh, other host within less than one millisecond. And less than one millisecond or microsecond, you know that this time you won't even identify it. You won't even consider it. At that point of time, what will happen? This VM will freeze. Okay. So we call it as a FSR. So they call something called fast suspend resume. So you might have heard about suspend resume kind of stuff, but there's another kind of flavor of fast suspend resume, which is a kernel level implementation. In fast suspend resume, it does not suspend the entire VM and it's all the memory process. It just uh, do a very fast suspend resume where su VM is only minimalistic processes are being su suspended. And then what happens is your CPU state and memory and net network state will be migrated and during this time. So during this time, what is happening? Your CPU, network packets and your 100 MB of pages or 1 MB of pages, all these pages are getting migrated here. And once it get, get migrated here, your VM will have a memory, your VM will have a CPU, your VM will have a VNIC. Memory will be mapped here, CPU will be mapped here, network will be mapped here. This VM will power off, this VM will power on. And once this VM will power on, the ownership of this VM, VMFS will, VMFS will release the lock for this particular VM because this VM will power off and delete it. And this VM will take the control and VMFS will update the lock, uh, the, the on-disk locking or uh, the ownership of the VM and he will hand over the ownership to this ESXi2 host. And that is where you used to see that the migration has happened. So people have a misconception that when I do a migration, my VM is moving. VM is not moving. Your VM is still sitting here only. This VM is will power off. But then in the backend, VMware has created a new VM for you. So you get a notion that I am my suddenly my VM is moved from one host to another host. But that's not the reality. And actually what is happening is there is a shadow VM is being prepared. And once the state of this VM is equal to this VM state, then this VM will power off, release the lock and the VMware will power on this VM on the ESXi2 and it will take the ownership and you get a notion that my VM has migrated. Okay. So that is what your V motion is all about it. That is where, uh, that is what your V motion, this is how your V motion works actually. Right. If you have interest in learning VMware more in depth, not from an administration perspective, but from the architect or consulting perspective, then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's a India's first job ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands-on labs, 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one in-person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor and this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.